So welcome to the Cardini change or the Pugues pass or uh, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a long story on what it should be called and what it, it's actually like known for but or or used for but yeah so the i'll just call it the cardini change just for simplicity's sake but just know that there's um there's quite a bit of history behind it so <laughs> get ready for another long history section but anyways the cardini change is the second uh on the deck color change that i'm going to be teaching the first one was obviously the paintbrush paintbrush change there we go and so yeah, I'll, I'll go through, well, throughout the lecture, I'll go through three different methods on how to do the Cardini change. So the first one is actually the art original Cardini change used by Richard Valentin uh, Pitchford. So yeah, that that's um, Cardini's like actual name. So that was called the Cardini snap color change. The other thing that you're gonna go over is, that we're gonna go over rather, is the George, George Pugues pass. So that's the uh, Pugues pass, if you don't know. And then the third one is going to be my sort of handling on the Cardini change with, uh, yeah, and some reasons why I actually made it that way. But yeah, so uh, actually what's really funny is that <laughs> none of the uh, the current day version of the Cardini change was neither created by Cardini himself nor by George Pugue. So uh, yeah, we actually, it's a, it's an interesting history section, which uh, yeah, we're, let's, uh, let's get into the history section right now. Might as well. So as I mentioned before, uh, yeah, neither Cardini, so Richard Valentin Pitchford, nor George Pugh actually came up with the uh, Cardini change or the Cardini change that we know of today. So uh, yeah, where does the modern day handling of the Cardini change actually come from? So uh, let's take a trip down history and uh, let's talk about, well, sort of the, uh, sort of the history behind like this, this mechanic. Right, because that's that's the main crux of the Cardini change, right? So the modern day technique actually comes from uh, it's actually quite old. So it actually comes from someone by the name of J. E. Pierce, and he published it under the name of the turn card, and he actually didn't use it as a um, as a color change. He actually used it as a uh, as a uh, reverse. So he used it as part of a an inversion routine, and he published that back in The Sphinx, Volume Eight, uh, Number Six, back in 1909. So that is uh, that's uh, quite old, I would say. And so uh, yeah, it's what's really interesting is that he actually never really sort of describes the slight. He actually just shows the picture, and he's just like, yeah, just do this. <laughs> and the second picture of the uh, of the effect shows this. And so this is the Cardini change without a doubt, right? So uh, yeah, but he doesn't really describe it. So that's uh, that's the interesting part. But yeah, regardless, that's uh, that's the uh, that's the first time I believe this mechanic has been put into print. The uh, the second publication was in the Sphinx, Volume uh, Twenty One, Number One, back in 1922, and it was actually a, a move that was very similar to the Pugues Pass. It was called the Ultra Simple Pass and was just not credited to anyone. But it's basically the Pugues Pass, but it doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't really have any sort of tension because it actually uses gravity. So yeah, you just sort of let the let the car just fall on its uh, on its side on its own using gravity, which I think is a pretty interesting mechanic. But I wouldn't personally um, just touch it, I guess. And uh, since we just spoke about the Pugues Pass, let's uh, let's go into it. So the Pugues Pass actually came from a letter from George Pugue to uh, John, Nor uh, John Northern Hilliard. So that's the person who actually wrote Greater Magic. And so he actually wrote the letter, uh, he actually sent the letter back in 1933. But it wasn't until the 1994, 1994 there we go, uh, reprint of Greater Magic that the move was actually uh, publicized. So that section is called More Greater Magic. And it was actually very similar to the uh, Ultra Simple Pass, but unlike the Ultra Simple Pass, which actually used gravity, this one actually required your fingers to actually lever up a card, which I'm not going to do right now because I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it later on. But um, yeah, so that's not... So the Pukes Pass was used as a control, not as a color change. So... Where does the uh, where does the uh, the pinky mechanic come from? 
what if uh, what if we took a look at the Cardini change uh, or the original Cardini change that Richard Valentin Pitchford actually used? Maybe that could be the pinky mechanic. As it turns out, not exactly. So the famous Cardini change actually came from Card Manipulation Volume Three back in 1934 by Gene Ugard, right? Ugard. I don't, I don't know why I say Ugard, but. <laughs> Uh, so this was published under the name of the Cardini Snap Color Change. So what's really interesting is that this is vastly, like, very, very different from the uh, from the Cardini Change that we actually know and love today. So rather than using the mechanic, uh, the the mechanics of just like the pinky to lever up a card, you actually had the card clipped, and then you would lever up the card. So that's not it either so now we're left so the two moves that are apparently the cardini change aren't the cardini change at all right so where does the cardini change actually come from right um well if we actually look deeper into history there has been actually several there has been several instances of a cardini change mechanic but they just weren't used for a color change so in Expert Card Conjuring back in 1968 by Alton Sharp, there's actually a move called, well, there was actually a series of, move, uh, of moves called Double Lift Substitutes, and those were by Ed Marlowe. The fourth method in particular was actually just a Cardini change-esque thing, but used as a switch or an addition. So he actually did something like uh, this, I would say. So that's something that Ed Marlowe actually did. Steranko on Cards, which was published back in 1960 by James Steranko, there was something called the Shadow Steel, which was used by uh, James Steranko to get into a lateral palm, right? Which I think was, uh, well, that's not like a proper lateral palm, but, but still, right? Which I think is pretty interesting because, again, it's basically the modern day Cardini, but not used as a color change. And then last but not least, we have The Ultimate Secrets to Card Magic by uh, Di Vernon, written by Louis Ganson, which was published back in 1967. So in that book, there's something called The Rooklyn Top Palm by Mo uh, Morris Rooklyn. So that was, again, something very similar to The Shadow Steel by, by James Duranko, except that he went into a full palm, right? So that's very interesting that we have all of these moves using this sort of same mechanic, but just not as a color change but i think that the modern day iteration of the cardini change probably comes from two very distinct sources and i i, I believe that our cardini change actually comes from this generation in particular so ray cosby and daniel garcia so both of these are very popular magicians and so ray cosby actually published the coffin change which is basically just a um a modern day Cardini change, and he published that in Spectacle by Stephen Minch, which was published back in 1990. Um, Daniel Garcia published obviously the Ego change in Projects back in 2005. And so both of these changes actually used a pinky mechanic, right? Uh, what, what's actually really interesting is that Stephen Minch, and I quote from his book in Spectacle, actually says this about the coffin change. Quote, the, dynam the, oh, sorry, the dynamic involved is that used uh, the dynamic involved is that used in the Cardini snap color change. So he's saying that it's basically the same thing, right? It's basically the same thing as the Cardini snap color change, but that's just not entirely true. So already we see like the lines of the mechanics of the Cardini snap color change and the modern iteration of this sort of being blurred, which is um which is interesting. So I assume that this blur in in mechanics is actually caused by just history, right? So while the mechanics aren't exactly the same, I just assume that magicians like throughout history are just like, yeah, both, both of these moves just sort of look the same. So let's just toss them in one in one category. And you know, it, I guess that's what they did, right? Because I mean, let's take a look at the mechanics, right? It's, oh yeah, a card is 
uh, a card is popped over and then it's dragged to the bottom of the deck and then you know for this one the card is popped over and then it's dragged to the bottom of the deck right yeah it's similar enough might as well just toss them in the same like category of things and just call them the same thing right because let's not forget right magic is very convoluted right for every version of a move that you know there's probably 10 more out there so let's just think about the tilt right people just call it the marlow tilt nowadays uh even though there's like people like uh like edward victor there's people like hofzinzer there's people like die vernon who had basically the same ideas but you know i assume that everyone just unanimously just tossed it under the name of marlow tilt because Honestly, it's all the same thing, so might as well just toss them under this, the same category. So I assume that's what sort of happened about the, um, that's sort of what happened with the Cardini change. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically what just happened. Considering how, like, big of a name Cardini was, I assume we're just like, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, sure, he's, um, yeah, sure, he created this change. Yeah, sure, Cardini change. <laughs> so I assume that's what happened. So probably just a product of just convolution and just history. But also, as a fun fact, in Card Control by Arthur Buckley back in 1946, actually had a move called Color Change, parenthesis, instantaneous, uh, close parenthesis. But it's basically the modern day Cardini, but it's uncredited. And I assume most people actually don't know about it because, well, it's in a book called Card Control, but it's a color change. So I assume people just like overlooked it. They're like, nah, this is a book about card controls, not color changes. So I don't need to care about that. But it's really interesting because card control in this instance actually means like having control over the cards like an expert not the category of moves so uh yeah it just went on unnoticed by a lot of people but just know that the modern day cardini is actually in card control so that's um that's a little tidbit of history for you so uh let's go over the pukes pass so we're going to go through the moves in chronological order so yeah let's talk about the pukes pass so in the book in uh, greater magic by john norton hilliard uh well in the 1994 reprint it was actually called george pukes pass but everyone just calls it pukes pass so uh you know might, might as well just call it pukes pass <laughs> but it was actually not used as a color change again it was actually used as a control i'll uh, i'll quote a um something from the book so quote uh this is an excellent slight it's actually an economical form of the side steal unquote but uh honestly I, I think that this is more of a side slip but we'll get into the differences between a side slip and a st uh, side steal later on in the uh palming live stream lecture series so it's in quite a bit but just know that this is more or less a side slip or at least an economical form of a side slip but anyways uh let's get into the pukes pass so you're gonna have a card selected uh however you want right and we have the audience show it around right next we're going to actually split the deck in half so now your right hand is uh in a uh, right hand middle grip so it's holding about half of the deck and your left hand is just in a standard dealer's grip like so all right so now that you have the deck split into half what you're going to do is that you're actually just going to take uh half the audience return back the card like so and just place it on top of the left hand packet like so all right and so here's where the mechanics of the move come into play so now as your right hand actually goes on top of this packet that's where the mechanics of the move are going to uh to uh to occur right so as your hand actually goes to place your this packet on top your middle finger is going to curl on top of the deck and it's going to contact the selection with the pad of the uh of yeah of the pad of finger right so here we go so now what it's going to do is that it's actually going to apply pressure on the selection to the right and downwards as well and this causes it to actually just spring up like so all right and so notice how only the middle finger uh, does basically anything right the other fingers just sort of move out of the way and once the card just pops up, they just come back in and they just support the card, all right? So the other fingers don't really do anything. It's just the middle finger, all right? 
And so this all happens while your right hand is about to return the top packet to this portion of the deck, all right? And so to cover this card, you might actually need to, uh, depending on the angle, you might actually need to tilt your right hand forward a bit, right? Because if it's directly on top, this is what ha this is what happens. So you might need to tilt it forward like so, just to hide this card, all right? But otherwise, this should be this should be fine, all right? So you might need to tilt it, tilt it forward like so, all right? So now what you're going to do is that now you're going to square the deck, so you're going to place everything on top of one another. And now this card is hidden solely by just your right hand, right? Because before it was hidden by the packet and your right hand. Now, once you return this 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 packet, it's just being hidden by the right hand, all right? And now your right hand remains there in sort of like a bill grip again, right? And now to basically just square up the card and to basically just, uh, yeah, finish the control, you're just going to flex your your left middle ring and pinky finger causing this card to just go on top of the deck like so. So that's basically the Pugues Pass, all right? Uh, but in the book, they actually suggest three different covers for the plate for the replacement. So the first one is actually a body turn. So square everything up and then you just turn your body. And as you turn your body, you just flex your fingers and then you you will address someone else. So that's the first cover. The second cover is just a deck raise. All right. So you have this, you have this. So you just uh, it's a deck raise and, a, and then a riffle. So here you would flex. You would then your right hand would then would then grab the whole deck upwards. So we shift the deck to the left hand fingertips, like so, and then we just give it a uh, a sort of riffle, right? Like so, and that's the second cover that's recommended in the book. And also, I'm not going to go through the riffle because that's just you know, <laughs> it's a simple thing. The other thing that the book recommends is actually just a simple wrist turn. So you have the card on top of the deck. Here, you're just going to turn your left wrist downwards and you're going to have the deck meet this card rather than the other other way around. So you could just do this and then you could just, yeah, just gesture elsewhere. All right. So that's basically the Pugues Pass and how it was published. And unlike how we see the modern day Cardini change, this uses the middle finger as a lever rather than the pinky. And so, yeah, what's really interesting is that Olmac or Olivier uh, Ma Ma Macia, I think, then refined the move and then just named it the WoW Control. But other people have also named the, uh, have also claimed the handling. But, you know, Olmac was the first person I heard it from, but he published this back in Control Freak 2004. So, you can, yeah, you can go ahead and look that up if it's still available. But... Yeah, that's generally the Pugues Pass. Next, we can go into the Cardini Snap color change. So this is the basically just the original Cardini Snap color change from Genu Guard's Card Manipulations Issue 3. And so, yeah, you'll see how different the original handling is from, yeah, the one that you all know and love today. So what we're going to do is that you're going to execute a double turnover, right? You can do this by, uh, you can do this by just getting a pinky count and then just doing a soft double. Again, I have like a tutorial for both of these moves in my channel. But yeah, <laughs> but anyways, you can, you. it doesn't really matter as long as you turn two cards on top of the deck like so, all right? So now we're going to do is that you're going to get a pinky break on top, uh, on the top card like so. So now you have your, your card here and then you have your, your, yeah, just the other card on the bottom. Uh, well, right below it, all right? The next thing you're going to do is that you're going to actually widen up this break like so and you're going to insert your ring finger into the break all right you're going to insert your ring finger into the break and you're actually just going to release uh, release the pinky break with your uh with your pinky right so now yeah this break is just being held by the ring finger 
So now you have this weird, weird contraption over here. But to prevent this card from being like too, too loose, you're actually going to curl in your middle finger and your pinky finger on top of the card like so. All right. So you have this, this sort of weird grip. All right. The other thing that you can actually do to get this, this weird break is that you can just push the top card over, insert your ring finger underneath, pull the card back with your thumb, and then just again, wrap your middle and your ring finger around, uh, middle and pinky around of the face of the card. So again, you're, you're clipping this card, which is, uh, again, it's a, it is a sort of weird sort of move, but it is, um, uh, it is sort of an interesting thing, but yeah, it doesn't really matter as long as you get into this, uh, this position, right? So now what you're going to do is that you're actually going to change into a different grip in your left hand. So you have a dealer's grip and you're basically just going to slightly modify this dealer's grip by just moving your index finger over here to contact basically the area near the upper right corner over here along the long edge of the deck. So it's just right below of the upper right corner over here. All right. So now that's over here, this, your thumb and your index finger are all that's going to be holding this deck. All right. So now that you have this, so now you're in this position, what you're going to do is that you're going to approach the deck with your right hand and you're actually just going to flick it, right? You're going to flick this top card over here. And what you'll notice that's the, is that the right hand actually hides this whole setup over here. So it's going to be hovering around the right long edge over here and it's going to flick the deck, right? And you're going to flick it twice. So one, two, and on the third one is when the change is actually executed. So one, two, and then the change is just this. You're going to extend these fingers. You're going to extend your middle ring and pinky finger. And because this card is, is being clipped by those fingers, this card goes along with it. All right. But because it's done under the action of flicking and under the cover of your right hand, it just looks like it just changes. Oops, sorry. So because this change happens under the uh, under the uh, the cover of the right hand and also under of a flick, it looks like this card just changes, right? But secretly, this card is being clipped in between of your ring, uh, middle ring and pinky finger, right? So what you'll notice is that the left fingers are never fully extended, right? They just need to extend enough so that the card becomes vertical and until this card actually hits the right palm over here because you don't want your right palm to be so high up, right? Because you need to actually hit the card, right? And so what you'll notice is that when the card actually hits your palm, it actually hits around the uh, the palm, the area of your palm that's right below of your right index finger, right? So when it actually uh, extends, this card hits this area over here, all right? So now that you have this, immediately afterwards, you're going to press downwards with your right palm so that the card actually bends on its long, uh, on the short edge over here, right? So it's actually bending. So this is what it looks like beneath, right? So this is what it looks like. And now you're going to grab the deck in a right hand bill grip, like so. All right. So now that you have this, you're actually going to move the right hand and by extension, the deck actually upwards, All right? So now that you have, uh, so now that you have, uh, yeah, just the card clipped over here, you're going to move and the, so, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go back just a bit. So you have the card clipped over here. It's extended and it's hitting the right hand. So now you're, you're basically going to have two parts, right? Once the deck is in a bill grip, you're going to have the deck, which is sort of independent in the right hand, and then the card that's clipped. All right, so these are two different moving parts. So you're going to move the right hand upwards and this is actually going to serve two purposes. One is that, hey, look, the card actually changed, right? So this, this pop, right? Hey, look, the card changed. But this also gives me space at the bottom. 
So you'll see that this gives me space for the dirty card to clean up. So what this does is that here, now there's a whole bunch of space, which means that if I just curl in my middle ring and pinky finger, it's basically square with the rest of the deck again, right? It's not in this weird vertical position. If I just curl it in, now it's square with the rest of the deck. So what I can do is that if I just put the rest of the deck on top of it, right? That's, yeah, that's the cleanup, right? But the book actually recommends you that after you place the deck on top, you actually just run your, run your thumb along the long edge of the deck as sort of a squaring action, right? And then you display your right hand as being empty. And that's the original snap color change. And also, if you're just having trouble with, uh, if you're getting stuck with, uh, with just, uh, this, and then your, your ring finger is still like stuck beneath it. And you're just like, oh, you're fumbling around. Just relax your fingers and you'll see that the deck just naturally just pops into your palm. All right. So that's the, um, that's the cleanup for the, uh, the Cardini snap color change. And that is the Cardini snap color change. Uh, yeah, so what you'll notice about how it's different from the modern day Cardini change is that, well, there's a couple of differences. One is that the card is actually clipped, right? And this extension of the fingers is what actually causes the card to move from, uh, from just the uh, perpendicular position to, the, uh, to its vertical position, right? The second most uh, obvious change for the Cardini snap color change versus just the modern day Cardini change is that the dirty card actually remains face up, right? So you'll notice that when I actually do the Cardini snap color change, the cleanup doesn't sort of end there because the, uh, the dirty card is still face up on the bottom of the deck, right? So it remains face up rather right, than becoming face down. Because if you're familiar with the Cardini change, this actually gets pulled face down to the bottom. So that's the two main differences between, yeah, just the Cardini snap color change and the modern day Cardini change. So here, uh, before, I, before I go into the gripes, I just, I'll, I'll just show you how the modern day Cardini is being performed and why it actually vexes me. So this is how it's being performed nowadays. It's... Oh, Oh, wait, hold up that I used that as a vanish, <laughs> but hold up. I'll, I'll try and get it. Sorry. These cards are way too sticky, but it looks like something like this. And then you just see this weird drag for some reason. And then this all around square up. So that's how the Cardini change is being performed nowadays. And here's why I don't like it. And here's how uh, I tried to take into some different things into account as well. So if you know my preference for slights, I hate doing minor grip changes. So even if it's just a simple index to corner, right? Even, even, if, it's, even if it's just like a simple index movement, I hate it. <laughs> I would prefer to go through like entire moves in just a standard dealer's grip. So yeah, I want the entire change to be doable with just a standard dealer's grip. So that's one condition I set out for, for the Cardini change. The second thing about my, uh, my gripe is that I hate having the right hand actually touch the deck during the change, right? So you'll notice for the Cardini snap color change and also for the modern day uh, Cardini change, the Cardini change, the Cardini snap color change, you have to raise the deck upwards, right? So, so that the change actually works. The, the modern day Cardini handling is also very much the same. You have to execute the change, 
you have to grab the deck in a build grip and then drag the card underneath and then do an all around square up which i'm not the biggest fan of because i think that having two hands involved in a in like a color change that removes the um the i don't know the mystique of it so i want the entire change to be doable with only one hand and that is very much so possible and so i also hated the cleanup with the all around square up because i don't know i just hate this motion in general it's such a bizarre move right because there's i think you can just if you really want to square up the deck just do this right why why go through all this all this kerfuffle right so you know my my third condition for the cardini change was you know just make sure that the cleanup is doable with one hand as well so then i don't need to do this stupid all around square up so if anything has like a uh <laughs> so if anything has like that weird hand drag and an all around square up that's an immediate turn off for me so those are the three conditions that i set up to um to sort of take into account for my cardini change one is no grip changes it's all the same grip throughout the entire move the second condition is well just do the entire move with just the left hand the right hand is just there to act as cover and then yeah the third condition is no all around square up to clean up the uh the deck right to clean up the move so everything has to be done with one hand and in the same grip so with that out of the way let's start talking about the finessed version of the cardini change or at least the finesse version of the modern day cardini change so you're going to start off in a dealer's grip and you're going to remain in the dealer's grip for the rest of the move do a double turnover again you could do a soft double you can do a pinky count to a soft double it doesn't matter so now that you have this what you're going to do is that you're going to take your right hand and you're going to hover it on top of your right uh, left wrist like so all right so it's palm down like so and make sure that your fingers are are kind of closed as well but but make sure that they're, they're also relaxed so they're they're closed but they're also relaxed all right so the right hand will will act as a cover throughout the entire process but it also acts as a sort of trigger for the magic right so it's sort of like the magical gesture right because uh you know you know when you do magic and you're like that's that's the ma magical gesture or you do a snap and that's the that's the moment the magic happens the right hand acts as the magical gesture all right so now that you have this your your right hand is actually going to do one thing one thing only and that is just to wave above of the deck from left to right like so all right and so and so you'll notice that the wave literally covers the mechanics of the change as it progresses right because the cardini change goes from the right all right so as it waves to the right the change actually progresses as it goes on all right so that's the uh that's the interesting part about the wave so now that you have that you're going to start the wave so during the wave there's actually going to be a very brief moment when the right hand actually covers the entire deck it's during this moment that you execute the change all right so it's just a very brief moment so here and that's when the change is actually completed all right so you're going to do this and when the right hand is actually being covered you're going to curl in your pinky finger so that the pad of it is contacting the face of the card all right and so what you're going to do is that you're going to apply some pressure with your pinky to the right and downwards as well so what this causes it to do is that it actually causes this top card to lever up like so all right and so the middle and ring finger don't really do anything the pinky is the one that does everything and you'll notice that the card isn't actually in line with the deck like so it's actually more or less at a 45 degree angle to the ground right it, it's sort of like going towards the ground like so and so during during the change so during the process of it just levering up my left thumb actually bevels the deck right bevels it towards the right so you'll notice that as i execute the change the deck is being shifted towards the right 
So the entire deck now has a very nice bevel towards the right. So you can see that there's basically a nice step, right? So you see that it's being beveled like so. So this is all done under the thumb like so. So it's just a simple shift. All right. So that's the, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the bevel. So you want to, you, you really want to, uh, do the bevel because the bevel is going to be very, very important for the change. So it's going to be a lever and then a bevel. All right. But it's sort of an, it's sort of a very subtle shift because it's just this and this, and then just this. All right. So it's just going to be this. And all of this happens under the cover of the right hand. Right, so during when the when the right hand is covering the entire deck, that's when you pop the card over, and then you shift the shift the deck towards the right, like so. All right. So as you continue the wave, now they start seeing. As you continue the wave, that's when they start seeing the change card over here, and that's when you're supposed to start doing the cleanup. All right. And so the cleanup is, uh, it's going to be sort of hard. So now what you're going to do is that you're basically going to clip the entire deck with just the third phalange of your index. So it's going to be the third section of your index as well as your thumb. All right. And you're going to clip it with the bevel. All right. So you're going to have the bevel. So this bevel, you're going to clip the deck over here so this deck is literally being supported by just these two fingers right now all right so if i remove my middle ring and pinky finger just my just my third set just this part of my index and my thumb are holding the deck right now all right and so i'm literally clipping it with the uh with the bevel over here all right and so what this means is that now my middle ring and pinky finger can do what they need to do to just clean up the, the dirty card, right? Because my right hand is still here and it executes the change. So now what happens underneath of my right hand while the uh, deck is being clipped by my index and my left, uh, left thumb is this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to curl in my middle finger and then my ring finger and then my pinky. All right, so it goes in that very specific order. So it's very, so it's middle curl in, ring finger curl in, and then pinky curl in. But it's sort of like in a quick su a succession. So you don't want, you don't actually want it to be like, uh, 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 right? You want it to be, to be relatively smooth. All right. So now that you have the, the card curled in, Okay, okay, so I'll explain why I actually curl in my middle finger first, right? Because when I do this, you'll notice that this card is actually at an angle. If I curl in my pinky first, this card will actually just spring out at an angle. And that's something I don't want. So to counteract this angle over here, if I just curl in my middle finger first, this card becomes more or less just simply side jogged, which means that now, I can just, yeah, now I can just square up the card very simply. And I could just square up the card simply by just releasing pressure with my ring finger and my pinky finger. So now this side jaw card is just being held by the nail of my, of my middle finger over here. All right. And when it's being held by the nail of my middle finger, so it's just being pinned against the bottom of the deck with my middle finger over here. I'm going to extend my ring finger and my pinky finger to contact the right long edge of the side jaw card. And I'm just going to push it in like so. All right. So you'll notice that this card, when it's being side jogged, is actually going to slide against my middle finger over here, uh, my index finger over here. And by sliding against my index finger over here, it actually becomes in line with the rest of my index, uh, with the with the rest of the deck, right? Because if I just did this, and then I slid it without contacting the index finger, this part would actually be sticking outwards, which is not preferable. So I want it to be here, 
and then I want this card to be hitting against the index finger as it's being squared up like so, all right? So this all happens. <laughs> this is this is so this is hard to explain because there's so many things that's happening at the exact same time. But yeah, so my index finger does not move, right? Because it acts as the gauge. So you're going to lever the card up. You're going to clip the deck with the with the thumb and the index finger. You're going to pull the card down with your middle finger, your ring finger, and then your pinky finger. So then the card becomes side jogged. So now the card is just being pinned against the bottom of the deck with your middle ring and pinky finger with just the nails of those fingers. Now you're going to release pressure with your ring finger and your pinky finger. So now only the middle finger is supporting this card. You're going to extend your ring finger and your pinky finger so that they contact the right long edge of the deck and start pushing this card back square with the rest of the deck. So this card is actually gliding along of the left index finger. So then it becomes square with the rest of the deck. Like so. So now you end up in this very position. Like so. All right. So this all happens at this stage over here. All right. So before your right hand actually completely clears the deck, you're just going to relax your middle finger and allow it to just pop out in the open like so all right so it's going to be this so it's still curled and you're just going to release it like so so it looks like this grip never changes throughout the entire process so i'll run you through the entire process as we go so here as my right hand covers the entire deck my pinky pops the card up my thumb bevels the deck like so all right as my right hand continues this motion to reveal the change card, I clip the entire deck with my thumb and my index, allowing me to actually just curl in the rest of my fingers to side jog this card over here. All right. And once this card is side, oh, sorry, this deck is way too new for, for me to be doing this. But with this card being side jogged now, I just curl, um, I just extend my ring finger and my pinky finger and push this card square against the rest of the deck. And then I just relax my middle finger and that's the change. So my right hand never touches the deck. All it does is wave above of it, all right? And so, yeah, that's the change and the cleanup as well. It's a lot to process, but that's the uh, that's the fun part. It's uh, it's quite a bit, but I think all of this, like all of these mechanics make it just work together so well. But usually I actually like doing a very slow change, right? Because I just love the feeling of a card that just slowly melts into another card you can't get that feeling if it's in instantaneous right so if you if you have this this is largely different from how you perceive this right because this is very slow and deliberate this is right this is like a sudden like shock right so i think that there's beauty in just having it melt into another card all right but again, this is just like a personal style. If you want to do a quick one, then yeah, just go go ahead and do one. So here are some uh, a few tips for uh, for the Cardini change. So if your if your Cardini change is making a loud noise, that's probably because you're pulling the card through the thumb, right? So what's actually happening is that your card is actually bending against of the thumb, and when it pulls through it snaps right because again this you're basically doing a tiny one card spring if you're doing this right so what i'm doing is that 
why I'm pulling the card at, into such an angle is because my solution to this problem. I actually pulled the card around of my thumb. So if you actually look at my uh, at my pinky, I actually pulled the card into an angle first, right? And then I pull the card directly down. So the fact that I'm doing this, so I'm doing a circular motion first and then pulling downwards. I don't just directly pull it up because then this causes just a snap. So this is what it does. Wait, hold up. Right, versus, right? So you, you still hear the friction, but it loses that snap, all right? So I pull the card around of the thumb instead of through the thumb, all right? And so here are here are some other tips that people use to reduce the noise. I personally don't use them, but you know, I'll still give them to you just because. So one tip that Xavier Spade actually uses is to actually injog the card, right? And by injogging the card, you're basically doing my solution of pulling the card around the thumb, but you're preparing it in advance. So you just use your pinky, pull the card down slightly like so and just execute the change right but but still i i personally prefer just pulling the card down around in one go but hey whatever whatever works for you another thing is that people use is that they use a thumb break so if you actually have a thumb break over here so this is just a very simple thing you just riffle off one card with your thumb and here what if you have a thumb break this means that this card doesn't have to be pulled through the thumb. Instead, you can just lever the card up, right? So a, a thumb break is something that you can do. Uh, but yeah, that's the two extra tips for for the for making the Cardini change silent. That is in jogging the card or just getting a simple thumb break. Personally, I don't like any of these solutions. I'm just gonna be honest. I just I just prefer just doing the pull around. And the reason for that is because having like the thumb break or having like the card in jog, I think that's just extra procedure. If you just pull the card around, that's way simpler. All right. The other tip that I have for you is that if the deck is actually slipping around while being clipped by your index and your thumb, chances are the deck is way too new. You have to break the deck in because if you actually break the deck in first, it'll lose some of its... Uh, frictionless uh, abilities and then it'll clump a bit better. So if I actually use an older deck like so and I actually did the change, right? There's much less chances of the deck just slipping around like so, all right? Versus if I actually used a new deck. So just break in your cards and just, yeah, that'll make this change a lot easier. The other tip that I have is that the deck should not move. This deck remains still in space. And yeah, it's only the fingers that actually move around of the deck. All right. So if you actually see the, uh, the Cardini change, the only part that should be moving is your fingers, right? So here the deck actually remains still. And my fingers move around of the deck, right? So I'll, I'll try and demonstrate it as best as possible. So here, the deck remains still as my fingers work around it. All right. So pretend that this is like a rock, a space rock over here, and you're working around it like so. All right. So those are my couple of tips for the Cardini change. And so here's just a, uh, a practice drill. So uh, yeah, so just a practice drill that you can do is that just do the mechanics of the move. Don't even do the change. So here I have my, I have my deck. Just go through the mechanics of the move throughout the entire deck and just get used to this, all right? Just get used to this simple motion and yeah. That's uh, that's my drill. <laughs> just, just, just get used to this movement. Just get used to this mechanic. Don't even think about the change. Just use it as a fidget move. And once you're once you're smooth enough with it, you can just sort sort of start adding your right hand in. And that's going to be yeah, that's going to be it for the um, for the practice drill. Just go through the mechanics of the change without even thinking about the uh the change itself. All right. So yeah, just go through the entire deck. <laughs>
All right, so here are a here are a couple of applications that you can do for the Cardini change. So obviously one is the uh, one is the uh, control, right? Because obviously George Pugh use it as a control first. So a control, like you just have a card selected, use it as a George Pugh thing, right? Simple enough. I taught that like the the first thing that that was that was the first thing I taught in this video. So you know. The other thing that you can do is obviously as a color change, you can also do it as a vanish. So you just have one card rather than two cards and you did this, it looks like the card just disappears, right? You, you can also do it as a production. So you have one card face up in the second position from top. You can actually just have a an indifferent card on top. This makes it look like a card just appears, right? So you can use it as a production. The other thing that you can do is use it as a reverse. So again, much like uh, much like J.E. Pierce, you can use it as a reverse. So if I have a card on top, I can just drag it to the bottom and that's our uh, that's our reverse, right? Just give it a simple cut and it's going to be reversed in the center. All right. The other thing that you can do is uh, much like Marlowe, you can use it as an addition. Uh, so I'm not going to go too much into detail on it, but this is what Marlowe does over here and then Right, so that's a Marlowe move. The other thing that you can do is that you can pull a uh, Maurice Rooklyn and just do a classic palm. So again, it's just the same thing. You just do a Cardini change, clip everything, and that's going to be the uh, classic palm. The other thing that you can do is go into a lateral palm like James Duranko. So much, very much the exact same thing. I'm not going through these. Uh, I'm not going to go through these just because like you can you can still buy the books so you know no point in me teaching them if you could just buy the books all right the other thing that you can do is that you can go into a chloe's palm so i already taught the chloe's palm but if you don't remember what the chloe's palm is it's the upper right corner of the card is being clipped by your pinky and your ring finger over here and your index is just contacting the upper right corner like so so you can go up, go into a chloe's palm so you can just go with this and then just steal away right or you can go into a pinky clip so it's just the chloe's palm without the index contacting it so it's just this right so you go into a pinky palm uh pinky clip and that's that's that right so those are the applications those are just some ideas that you can use i again much like much like before i don't really go through the um the applications that much because it's already been explored, so I don't, I feel like I shouldn't uh, touch them. But regardless, I'll go over where you can learn the application ideas in more detail right about now. So if you're interested in the Cardini change and its applications, there are multiple sources that I can lead you to. So the first one is Card Manipulations by Gene Ugard. That's where the original Cardini Snap color change was published in. You can go ahead and look at the Steranko and Cards by James Steranko. That's where the Shadow Steel comes from. You can go look at Five Controls by Andrew Frost. There again, there's a uh, there's a uh, control using the uh, using the Cardini. You can go ahead and look at the Download Bundle by Andrew Frost. There's a there's a rather Cardini esque reverse in there. There's also the Color Change by Tony Chang. It's a very beautiful color change, and I still think that it's probably one of the best color changes out there. And it's where a huge part of where this changes theory actually comes from. So you can go ahead and look at that. There's also the Yoan Fontaine Patreon. So yeah, it's um he has some uh, he has a couple of ideas on the Cardini change on his Patreon, so you can go ahead and look at that. There's also Spectacle by Stephen Minch. It's sold as an ebook on the uh, on Penguin Magic, and that's where uh, Ray Cosby's uh, Coffin Change is published in. There's Projects by Daniel Garcia. It's five DVD projects, or you can buy as a download. It's on Theory Eleven, and yeah, that's where you can learn the Ego Change. And last but not least, there's the Elusive Elusive by Ben Daggers. And that's where, well, he, he has a, he has some pretty interesting things with the, uh, well, he, he teaches the Cardini there, but he uses it in the context of a routine. So, um, yeah, you could go ahead and look at that. 
And that's the Cardini change. Uh, it's a change that I actually spent a lot of time thinking about. So uh, if I actually look back at my notebooks, sorry. <sighs> okay, I just checked. So uh, if I actually just checked at my notebook, so that was about like 2020. So I would say that I spent the, about like three, four years actually thinking about the Cardini change. So it has been quite a bit of time. Yeah. And so it's probably the the second to last color change of the uh, color change livestream series. The last color change is going to be the um, the very famous Ernest change. And so yeah, I, I'm I'm I, like the Cardini change. I'm relatively happy with, but the Ernest change is still forever going to be a work in progress. So yeah this this has been a culmination of a lot of research a lot of just thinking about the move and yeah that's why i hope they treat the cardini change well so um yeah so if i if i see anyone who watched this video and they still do this stupid thumb hand drag into an all-around square up i will come and find you <laughs> but yeah that's um that's going to be it for the cardini change yeah hope you guys enjoyed stay healthy stay safe and see you guys next time